Hey everybody, my name is Cole Evans. I'm the CEO of Enduro Metals. Uh, today I'm going to quickly walk you through our most recent press release um, about geophysics up at Burgundy Ridge and explain to you why it's so significant um, or such a significant development in this story. Okay, geophysics supports drilling. Let's see if I'm working here. Perfect. All right. Drilling support, or <laughs> geophysics supports drilling results pointing to large copper gold porphyry at Burgundy. What do we mean by that? Okay, well, let's go right to the section. First off, for those of you who don't know what induced polarization or IP is, okay, IP is a geophysical method. It's an electrical geophysical method that measures two different things. There's, there's two main properties we look for. One is resistivity or conductivity. They're inverse of each other. And the second one, the one we're focused on here, is chargeability, right? Now, why chargeability? I'm gonna, you know, a quick, a quick geophysics lesson, 101. Um, why chargeability? Well, I'll use two examples. If we were looking at a let's say a VMS deposit. VMS means volcanogenic mass of sulfide. Uh, VM VMS deposits tend to be tight, narrow, high-grade horizons of, of, of a massive sulfide, right? Hence, hence the name. Well, that's we would expect, say, in that scenario, where there's lots of metal in a tight location, um, to be highly conductive. No different than, you know, copper wire in your house is, is conductive. Okay, but it's not necessarily going to be very chargeable. Again, do a little science experiment in from wherever you're listening to. Turn, flick your light switch. Do the lights turn off after five seconds or do they turn off right away, right? They turn off right away. That's because the wire that's running through your, the, the uh, to connect your lights to your switch is conducting electricity, but it's not holding it. It's not a battery. It's not, it's not chargeable. Okay. Well, with that principle, now let's look at why we look at chargeability. Because unlike the VMS example, porphyry deposits are much larger. They're, of course, typically lower grade, but much larger in size. And the mineralization style is this more, you know, speckled polka dots of, of, of mineralization, if you will, copper and gold bearing minerals throughout a much larger body. This has a tendency of being highly chargeable. That's why we're looking at this here. How do we, how do we get this? How do we get these sections? Is this just some, you know, I usually, I'll, <laughs> I shouldn't say usually, but often the, um, the, uh, joke, running joke in, in geology is, uh, we call geophysics geofantasy, right? There's lots of different ways that people can manipulate things. So it's important how you do the survey. And so what we do here is you can see this. So that when I say recce line in here, this is what I'm talking about. This is the recce line. This is about, this is 1100 meters long. And all these little points in here, that's each station. So what happens is guys literally go out and they lay 1100 meter wire along with a whole bunch of other things, copper wire. And then we splice in electrodes every 50 meters. These are our sensors, if you will, for, to pick up how the ground is reacting to the electricity that we're going to put through it. Okay. So with that, a couple important things to point out. The, you know, why did we put this here? Why is this a recce line? You know, it's about 350 meters away from the uh, mineralization, the, the holes from, I shouldn't say the mineralization, there's mineralization here as well, but from the 2021 drilling, the discovery holes, as we say for Burgundy. Well, the reason why we did it up here is because we could maximize our lateral, our horizontal extent of the line in this location. We could put the maximum amount of electrodes in the ground over this 1100 meters. It actually goes further, but this is, this is the significant portion of it. Um, and why do we want to do that? Well, not only does it get us lateral cover, but as how these surveys work, the longer the line, the deeper it's going to read. And that's of course what porphyries, these are the vertically oriented systems. We want to be reading or they form vertically oriented. I'll leave it at that for now, but um, we want to be reading as deep as we possibly can. Okay, so with that, this is what's most significant. We look at here, so what I call this greater than 10 millivolt feature, yeah, so the ready pink. What do we see? Well, the drill holes that we do have along this section, it, you know, I'll never, I almost use the term that I don't use, but uh, it's as close to a, a, close to a um, bullseye as you're really going to find. Uh, I hate using that term, but anyways, um, yeah, what, what's going on? We can see our strong copper gold enrichment 
as we get close to the anomaly, I'm going to touch on that hereafter, why this is this is significant. Um, and of course, the one location where we have it actually intersecting it, boom. And this is the type of material we're looking for, greater than that 1% copper EQ. That's what I believe, you know, 1% is high, but, you know, the 0.7 to 1%. Of course, we want, you know, the higher the better. But um, that's what it takes, uh, in, in, in my view, to, uh, to find a very significant copper gold porphyry deposit in northwestern BC. So that's exactly what we're looking at. And again, cliche to say, but really, you know, the proof's in the pudding. It's, it's nicking the tip of the iceberg here. Of course, this is all completely untested here. Um, but, uh, you know, what other evidence leads us to suggest, I mean, this, this one's pretty, pretty obvious, obviously, but let's talk about some of the, the other things here. Like we say, this enrichment. Well, porphyries, these alkalic porphyries, like we've discussed before, are the most difficult to find. They're the highest grade, but they're the most difficult to find. Why is that? Well, unlike it, the other subtypes, you know, calc alkaline systems, these other different subtypes where the alteration, the footprint, the fingerprint, if you will, of the deposits are kilometers in scale. You can see them from, you know, from satellite imagery. Um, alkalic porphyries don't have that same style. They're much, um, you know, tighter, higher grade, more cryptic alteration style. So one of the things that we look for is, you know, this is again, very high level. We do more than this, but what I've added in here is just general copper enrichment. We want to see these tighter, you know, few hundred meter, um, enrichment envelopes around these anomalies. Uh, no different than what we're seeing here. So you can see in all, all these drill holes are highly copper enriched. And if we come down to the plan view here, in fact, and so this is an update from our drill. This is why we're putting this press release out now, because this is a follow up really on the last one. Um, and you can see heading towards this area. Now, of course, this goes off section. It ends up going adjacent to the anomaly. Of course, when that was drilled, we didn't know this was here. But um, you can see the grades, again, increasing, the enrichment getting higher. In fact, right down to the best gold grades, right at the bottom of the drill hole, as we're getting closer, you know, but being adjacent to, to where this anomaly uh, appears to be located along this recce line. And very significantly, so we put this out last month, this main exploration target, our, our refined zone, we think is about 200, 225 meters wide, of course, dipping down into the earth and in 1200 meters in strike length if not larger but with with what we know right now and this is what we're seeing up to the north northeast that's that's what we think it is um this is right in the center of it you know a uh i i honestly i didn't know that this was here when i drew that drew that polygon but uh it's it it fits like a glove and going back to 350 meters away from the numbers that we got this year from the drilling up in this location. I, you know, the highlight one, the one I like the most, 146 meters of the 1% EQ. That's the point, uh, oh geez, what was that? 0.42 copper, 0.35 gold, I believe. Um, that would be right in the center of where we think this is. And there's a couple other important points to talk about this. I think this is distal. Um, I think we, we need to be moving in this direction as what we're seeing in here. And that goes into, you know, why have I highlighted this? Again, I like the, the full number breakdown more. We, we do the EQ just because it's easier for presentation, and easier for, for some people to understand. But let's look at the breakdown number. So this, this 39 meters here, again, a narrow interval, but just nicking what we now believe is the main body, literally nicking it right off at the top. Um, that breaks down to 0.62 copper, 0.52 gold. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be comfortable saying to anybody, look at any project around the world, um, whether it be exploration or mining, that, that number is going to, those numbers hold up. But we see negligible zinc. So we use copper and zinc again at a high level as a, as a thermal vector in these systems. We're seeing less copper, less zinc in the copper and the gold increasing compared to what we're seeing down here in these broken, in the, in the, um, in the broken down numbers, right? So we think we're getting closer to the center, probably sitting somewhere up and over here. And by the way, I get this question all the time. Yes, absolutely, we can drill on ice and snow. In fact, it's, it probably makes things easier because in British Columbia, you don't need a permit um, for for driving on on snow or ice, right? So that that's a no, this is all flat up here. That's so that's no issue for us. Um, and yeah, again, 
about 350 meters away. Now we don't know this, this shape is going to shift as you move down the hill. So that's another thing that's hard for people to take from a plan view map like this is we're about 350 meters laterally, horizontally. But as we come down the hill here, we've probably changed vertically, you know, approximately 100 meters. So theoretically, if we're just extrapolating this, again, it's not going to be that way, but it's going to be that general idea. We've probably nicked the edge of this anomaly. If it, if it again, if it continues way down here, which I, I, I believe it does, um, it's right back what we've been saying. We've just been nicking the edge of it over here. Um, and, you know, the numbers speak, speak for themselves. Uh, the grades speak for themselves. Last thing I'm going to cover. Okay, let's go to image three. And the last thing I'm going to cover. I've put this in as a scale comparison. Okay, I don't want people to think that, that this is, you know, the North Gold lens is in this location. No, we got more drilling to do. But um, it's to... It's to check another box. Of course, we always keep saying Glor Creek, this is the largest silicon or saturated porphyry in the world. You know, joint venture between Newmont and Tech. Um, it's in a it's in a uh, challenging location. It's way out way out in the mountains. Hence, why we're looking for one a uh, you know a, a replica, if you will, um, at, on our property, a much more accessible property. Um, well, this image is pretty uh, pretty stark. You know, representation on this looking at again as well. So, you know, I've, I haven't changed the, these have been made to scale. I've put these to scale. I haven't changed the shape of this anomaly at all. And this is, this is a cross section through the North Gold lens, uh, at Galore Creek. Again, that's, that's that Newmont Tech 50 50 joint venture. And you, you know, I'll let that, let the image speak for itself. And um, the, you know, apparent scale, geometry, and orientation uh, of what we're targeting is, is, is uh, starkingly uh, similar. Again, more right. Further drilling is required. It is n it is no guarantee, but that that this is is uh, is this right. That's no guarantee. It needs to be drilled first. But again, drawing back to um, you know where where we've nicked it is uh, is is holding its weight. So very exciting. Uh, this is going to be one of the main drill targets for 2022 more is going to come out on that as we get results back and out about a climb on and chachi there's still more to come on that uh 2022 is not going to be all bur it's going to be heavily burgundy focused from what we're seeing ah i shouldn't say that it <laughs> more more on that to come we'll see until we get all the data i don't want to speculate too much but um yeah it's it, it's exciting times and, and and hopefully for those of you who don't know what the significance of this is i would argue this can be even you know sig more significant than 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 a couple drill holes right um that are just randomly placed and, and might hit good grade but you you haven't put the story together this is putting the story together highly significant and um you know we'll we'll, we'll see how this develops in 2022. thanks for listening you guys uh if you have any questions please uh, you know, shoot us an email, call us, anything like that, and uh, I'd be happy to go over them with you. Take care.